We got the breech end of the barrel installed in the fore jaw, and we're back to alignment center of the bore. So I've got both ends centered about this far in where the range rod's showing. But we're running almost zero run out right here at the uh, muzzle end. Then I've got a little index mark here for my uh, where that uh, muzzle device lined up. So I can get that action pretty close to that. That way everything torques in and lines up right. So all right, we're ready to go ahead and uh, start machining on this. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is face that clean <clears throat> and square. Then we'll mark out for our tenon length. Okay, that looks nice. Lay out our <clears throat> thread tenon length. Our calculated thread tenon length is 951. Take a light cut to, to that line, set a zero. All right, one six one and eight tenths. Yeah. Great. Major diameter is done. Yep. So we've got our one and one sixteenth major diameter. So, like I mentioned earlier, we don't need a relief groove in the back. So I'm going to chamfer this. Okay. Chamfered. And I bet you can guess what we're going to do next. That's right. We're going to check center. First, I'm going to chamfer this to get the pilot in there. Blow out the bore. And by the way, I'm still using that same sized pilot bushing, so the bore's consistent from the end to the front, at least, in terms of diameter. So let's just check our, check our center. Go to neutral. Oh, yeah, she moved a little bit. Get this guy back into alignment. <clears throat> I'm taking light cuts, but I mean, machining is pretty brutal, of course. 
And when we're talking about tents of half thousands and tents, I mean, yeah, things can move on you. So never assume that the part you're machining is still aligned properly. And we're checking the back end as well as we go. Okay, so that should be good for threading. Everything is set up proper here on my compound. Got the angle. Check our center in terms of the tool. That's good. Set a machine for 16 threads per inch. So first I'm going to slow her down, RPM. Okay. Engage that. Go to my chart. 16 threads per inch is L, B, S, 1, V. L, B, S, 1, Victor. Right? 16. L, B, S, 1, Victor. Okay. And as I do, just want to verify we're getting 16. Can never be too safe here. I've been chambering rifle barrels for going on 10 years, so I'm comfortable with the process. Just this machine's brand new to me, so I'm still uh, working out. There's no kinks or anything. It's working perfectly. It's just I don't trust it yet. Not that it's giving me any reason not to trust it, but you know. All right, so we're going to take a scratch pass, and then we'll check our uh, threads per inch. That was barely a scratch pass. Thread pitch gauge, 16. Yep. That looks nice. The threads do not. And you know what? <clears throat> I think this insert is due for a change. So let's do that real quick. It is getting worn. These stainless steel barrels are awesome, but they wreak havoc on the high speed steel. Okay, try to do this without dropping anything into the chip pan. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that tip's burnt up pretty good. It's a good time to change her. So this is a three-sided cutter. It's like I've already used that one, that one. Here's a fresh side. Got one, one fresh side on this. So I'll probably do a review on these tool holders later on. I'm not going to stop up, stop production right now for that. Okay. Come on, get in there. Let's move over so I can get to this thing.
So it's the fall of 2012, and I'm a senior in college, and I get a call from my aunt that I don't know very well, but has always been really nice to me. And she says, hey, I don't know what to do for Thanksgiving, because okay. I don't have plans. Why don't you come out and hang out with me and my family? Tight. <clears throat> Put this tool away so I don't lose it. And proceed to carry on. Yeah, I can tell right away. That's a nice sharp point, which means our depth of cut is going to be slightly deeper. So I'm just going to run a pass at zero. But the night that becomes emblematic of how good that week was, was one evening. Let's see if that helps things. Oh, yeah. I can hear and see and hear that that's a sharp tool. Okay. One more time, sanity check. Yeah, you see, you're not. We're not getting those freaking nasty birds. And I look at Alvin and I say, "You go for forty." He says, "Hell yeah." And I say, so we keep playing. Yep, that's dead on. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Let's finish this up. That was a big trip. Beautiful friends. I'm blowing the smoke out of the way so I can see the end of my cut. So I can disengage at the right time. Okay, this should be final depth, according to the math. And we'll do a cleanup pass. And give her a check. Good. And when I see him, I'm going to give it to him and tell him that I hope that we can get back to 41 days. Yep. <clears throat> All right. I'm done with the threading tool. Let's do a little cleanup action. That was Jim O'Man. Jim O'Man was a sustainable community provider in town. He did eventually make it to Boston. Use my Kratex stick to clean these threads up a little bit. Jim still left out the 
And we'll index it, cut the counter bore, pre drill, recenter chamber. Yeah, it feels nice. And just double check, make sure that action still screws on. Yep. All right. Uh, it's good, and we are. <laughs> we need to get to here. So that'll be a matter of shouldering this back till this index is properly and then facing off the front to get it to the cor correct length. Okay, Let's see where we're ending up here. So there's our top with that black Sharpie marker line. Okay, almost a little more than halfway there. All right, a couple more passes and now we're there. So there's the line. This is gonna torque on slightly more. So that's all good. Um, so we're timed with the muzzle device now. All right. <clears throat> I've got the receiver indexed properly. The extension length corrected to 951. Now we're going to come in with my counterbore cutter held in my Gratan Rifles uh, reamer holder. And I'm going to back out a little bit. So it's we've got it lined up with the bore. I did recenter, checked center. It was out another thousandths or two. So got that corrected. So I'm just going to get my ARO set up here so I can monitor my travel as we go. Some cutting oil. So I'm using the exact same live pilot I did on the on the uh, for every operation, excuse me. And so I'll just proceed to cut to depth on this, which is one fifty five, I believe. I'll double check my spec sheet. Really nice cutter made by PTG, just save some time. Now that this aspect is a critical, really all this is clearance for the bolt nose and uh, for the extractor to pivot.
clear these chips. Okay, that ought to do it. One fifty nine. Okay, I'm just going to verify that this will close the bolt. That is. When it's torqued all the way on. Uh, okay. Okay. So we got a little play, a little clearance here. That's fine. What you want to see. So there's our counter board. Everything's done. Now we're ready to pre drill, bore it, and uh, check our run out, and then proceed to reaming the chamber. So it's getting a little late in the day. I might wrap it up, do that tomorrow. I don't know at this time. I got a customer that was supposed to come over, but I uh, haven't heard from him, so I don't know. But uh, so I think I'll make a phone call, see if he's still coming, and see what's going on there. And uh, I got another hour or so, I'll go ahead and chamber this to 6.5 PRC. All right. As always, each step of the, of the process, I'm checking for run out. I'm checking two places. So there's a little bit of run out in the back end, and then the front end is a few tenths out. So I'm just going to go back and forth, get this straightened out using the the back end tailstocks or geez, using the back end spindle spider and the four jaw chuck to get this guy aligned back into a kosher place. Very close and didn't really even move at all, but I'm going to cut this chamber proper. I'm going to do this right. Okay, so go back up here to the front. So this actually looks good. It's back here that does not. So the front end is centered by using the, the, the back end. If you think of the barrel pivoting like this, that's where you're getting that. The back end is just centering it axially this way, which is controlled by the four jaw. So I'll just simply go to the high side, and I'm looking at the low tick marks. All righty, got this guy centered in again, aligned. I've selected a drill slightly smaller than the reamer, probably 40 thousandths or so. Then I'm going to go in about an inch and uh, about 1.3 inches. Just check with our gauge here. Yeah, one and a half actually will be fine. 
So we're going to pre-drill one and a half inches, uh, get a boring bar, true up that uh, true up that surface for the uh, reamer, and uh, ream the chamber. So probably got to go a little slower here. Okay, install a bowling bar. To give the reamer a perfectly true surface to cut. First pass, I'm going to hand feed to make sure there's no surprises. Let's get this machine up to speed. Okay. Let's come in, touch off. I'm kind of seeing where the end of this free drill is. Be right around here. Yep, right there. Set a zero. Come out. Clean off. We're just chewing up the surface in lieu of the chambering reamer. The reamer will be guided by the pilot um, first, but this gives us a nice machined true surface to, uh, to uh, make that reamer Happy. One more pass here. Fast RPM, slow feed rate. Okay, there we go. True surface. We got plenty of material to remove with the reamer, so. We good there. So I've got to change up some things and get the reamer in. So we'll be back in a second. All right. Just to kind of further explain the reason I bore, pre-bore, so pre-drill, remove most of that material, and then come in with a boring bar is the drill is obviously a drill, so it's not going to be precise going to leave a lot of chatter and, and crap in there. The boring bar just cleans the surface up and gets it perfectly true since it's lined with the bore um, from the back of the case to the throat area by indicating it in that fashion. The uh, pilot will engage right about, you can feel it right about here, and then the shoulder of section of the reamer will begin cutting. So the reamer is guided by the bore in the live pilot, but pre-boring that surface gives the body of the reamer a perfectly straight hole to begin reaming. Um, that way it's not fighting against the, the actual bore of the barrel as it starts going in, so it's not wandering a little bit, wallowing out a little more material than we want. So this should... Well, this does ensure a perfectly straight chamber in relation to the bore. So I'll get this in the tailstock, get it set up, and begin reaming. So first step is to get it pre-aligned using our set screws here. Okay. 
like that and make sure it enters the bore straight, which it does. There's no hangups there. So we'll pull out. I'm going to kick the machine down to slow, really slow, just to start. Get some things out of the way over here. So that's the speed we're running to begin. We will uh, kick it up a little faster. So I'll do a few passes, um, and then we'll come back when we're close to uh, final headspace. Cutting oil. And nice and steady into the bore. Begin feeding in. And now I'm going to feel the reamer, ensuring no chatter or there we've engaged. And it feels good, smooth. I'm going to cut about 50 thousandths. until our chips start building up, packing up the flutes of the reamer. Okay, I'm gonna come to the end of my cut and pull out. There we have a nicely, just a be, the beginning of the chamber, the shoulder section is starting to be cut. Uh, I don't see any visual chatter. There's still oil and smuts all over it, but that looks good. Let's give it another 50 thousandths or so. We're engaged. It's an extremely slow process. That high pitched sound you're hearing will go away as we get deeper and deeper in there. So there it's gone. Okay, we got some good chip build up there. It's going to complete the cut. So this was a hundred thousandths pass. shiny polished chamber all right everything's clean uh, it's just a little leftover tape okay one final headspace check while it's still in the machine because we can fix it now for the very first time anything yeah. Providers for stepping I don't know up what that could have been, but go gauge in. The conference by University of Wyoming's firearm research Center. Action on. And the Southern County Conference for Death Toll. We're just. All the way up. And give it a good yark. Okay, there we go. 
And that's the go gauge, right? So zero play back and forth. And I can crack it loose. So that's what you don't want. And with it fully, well, as torqued on as I can do it by hand, which it will be torqued on just a little bit more, nothing. So that's minimal headspace, zero. Slap a piece of tape on the back. So with one piece of cellophane tape on the back, Represents about uh, two thousandths of an inch. Put the extractor over it. And there we go. That is match grade premium precision chamber. There's no no play in that guy at all. So pull the tape off one more time. <clears throat> Slap it back in over the extractor and falls on its own. But it is engaged with the, with the, go, with the go gauge. So that's why it's not just closing like that. There we go. It still has a tiny wee bit of tension. But as you saw with a one piece of 2000 cellophane tape on the back. It does not close. So, this barrel is done. Uh, at least the machining portions. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to get Cerakoted or not or whatever, um, but uh, the uh, breech end is completed. So, um, I'll probably pull out of the lathe and just kind of wrap the video up. Uh, this is all I was uh, hired to do on this one, so, uh, so yeah, um, we'll be back with a final wrap-up and uh, maybe a few more goodies.